Welcome to Security Speak Easy Show, where we discuss about all things network security. Our today's topic is 5G security. My name is Leah Sajakowski. I'm the Principal Product Marketing Manager for 5G Security, and I'm joined by Steve Gonzalez, the Senior Systems Engineering Manager, also for 5G Security. Together, we're going to address topics including what is 5G Security, who needs 5G Security, and how to get started with 5G Security. Steve, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great, Leah. Thank you for inviting me. We love to share some personal details about our guests. So I've been always wondering, what, what are those baseball bats that you have on the backdrop in, in your office? What, what's the story? Um, I was very involved with my son's baseball uh, co-coaching when he was younger. So like everybody else who's been locked into the same office for over a year, I just kind of keep them on display. Uh, so when I stare at them, it kind of reminds me of happier times. That's an awesome story. Thanks so much for sharing that. Before diving in into 5G security, Steve and I wanted to spend a moment demystifying what's 5G in the first place. So Steve, what do you think our audience should know about 5G? So 5G has a lot of buzz around it. Um, like the name implies, 5G is the fifth generation of a mobile standard. And let's talk about some of the key things that 5G brings. Um, the biggest thing to understand is 5G is an evolution of 4G. Um, and with 4G, what we really had is we, we finally saw the power of what a broadband wireless network can bring as far as services and applications to mobile users that really provided a wireline-like experience. So historically, when we hear about 5G, everybody gets caught up in the speed. And, and the speed is a big thing with 5G. You know, theoretically, we can get up to 20 gigabits per second. We have an ultra low latency network, but 5G is a lot more than just speed. Um, with the 5G standard, the architecture of how carriers build 5G networks has completely changed. We've migrated to a cloud native uh, architecture. So gone are the days of big uh, purpose-built boxes, we're now having lots of software conversations around containers and Kubernetes. Um, and all this flexibility allows for the service providers to build what's called service-based architectures that provide a lot of flexibility. Um, so really, when we think about 5G, we see the combination of speed, we see the combination of flexibilities that mobile service providers can build for these networks. And it really is starting to tailor itself for what 5G can be in the enterprise market. So with these customizable service-based architectures, are you actually saying that the enterprises are able to now customize their 5G architectures? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in addition to some of the underlying changes and the speed changes that 5G brings, uh, we're bringing in some key pieces of new functionality, as well as taking some of the existing functionality that existed in 4G and really being able to apply some of that to 5G. For example, uh, one of the big topics in 5G is a, is a technology called network slicing. And network slicing allows the carriers to build these logical networks that they can spin up and spin down um, as needed. And this will really allow the enterprises to take advantage of that, whether it's services, whether it's VPNs. Um, additionally, we're seeing 5G go into the utility space, going into the natural resource space or warehouses for applications like sensors and handsets. Um, so we're really seeing an, an, an explosion for, for, for private 5G networking. And then um, mobile edge access computing isn't necessarily something that came with 5G. We, we had that in 4G, but where it really shines in 5G is the fact that we have this new ultra low latency network with mobile edge access computing or MEC as it's commonly referred to. We can put applications at the edge of the network um, and really take advantage of the low latency. So these new services that we're starting to build in 5G is really giving the enterprise access to these 5G networks where they can sit there and merge and put their services in a 5G network. 
So you're saying that it's not just about new use cases or new devices, but it's actually also about new architectures and new ways to integrate with enterprise architectures. So then in, in that context, what's, what's 5G security? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we talk about 5G security, um, I think we need to look at a foundational approach that addresses two main things. We have the 5G subscribers, but we also have the underlying infrastructure, what makes a 5G network work. So um, for us at Palo Alto Networks, when we really looked back at what we were doing in 4G networks, we identified two key pieces. One was limited visibility into the user traffic, meaning um, if you look at how security was done in 4G networks, we spent a lot of time doing things on the edge and we spent a lot of time really at layer three and layer four in, in, in enforcement as the traffic was egressing and ingressing into the network. And then secondly was operational com complexity. We had a mix of encryption. We were using edge-based firewalls. We were doing clients. We had VPN type devices. So we were doing all different kinds of security solutions, but we were still leaving the network vulnerable in various pieces that could be compromised. Concretely, what are we talking about? What are the focus areas then for security? That's a good question. So as we talked about um, earlier, you know, 5G needs a radically new approach to how we're doing that. And us at Palo Alto Networks, we have a specific design approach of how we want to address this. So one, we believe in full visibility of both the subscriber and the, and, and, and the network. So what we want to do is we want to embed layer seven next generation firewalls into the mobile core. So this will allow us to identify threats in real time. So we'll be able to see viruses, malware, URLs. Um, we'll be able to do this in re re real time. And like we said, we do that with our strata based products. Secondly, we talked about the infrastructure of 5G and how 5G is built on a cloud native architecture. So we need to secure the underlying container and in, in infrastructure and provide runtime security for the, for the underlying parts of the network. And for that, we would leverage our Prisma Cloud Compute products. And then lastly would be the ability to automate, right? How do we identify things in both the firewalls and Prisma Cloud Compute and take action on that immediately and identify that to shut the threat down? So now we actually have a foundation that focuses on the subscribers and focuses on the infrastructure to provide a complete foundation for what we're trying to do. And that lends itself very well to how the enterprises are trying to on-ramp into 5G technologies. Let's focus on those enterprises who may be more used to buying their connectivity services as a service from the service providers but not and less familiar with with deep integration into their networks or or deeply securing them. So why does an enterprise need 5G security strategy? So again, we're going to see enterprises start to view 5G as just a natural extension of what they're currently doing, for example, in their campus and branch networks, in their data center networks. So by focusing on our unique ability for visibility, which allows enterprises to have a unified approach across all the network types, we're giving them can, can control over the whole network. And 5G is just going to become a natural extension of their security posture to currently what they do today. So as you have coached many of our, of our customers on this, what are the first steps for it, for an enterprise to get started with taking control of their 5G traffic security? So usually when I start the conversation with enterprise customers, I talk about what are they currently doing in their network today, right? So we always have conversations with them uh, and they're talking about how they're doing layer seven application-based policies to do enforcement, right? They want to have, and they're currently doing visibility into their network to detect threats in real time. And then almost all of our customers are providing some kind of automation where they can isolate the, the known threats but also protect against some of the zero day threats. So all these are must have for them. Then we start to talk about what are they looking to leverage when they start to think about how are they gonna enter this 5G space? And the answer to that question more often than not is, well, that's interesting, how do we do that? And then we go into a deeper dive conversation because we believe at Palo Alto Networks that we have 
unique solutions and te technologies that allow them to take their current enterprise security posture that they do for their current networks and simply extend that into what they're trying to do and take advantage of for 5G. Enterprises, pay attention. That's how you get started. Steve, brilliant insights. That was awesome. Thank you so much for having you here in the show. Thank you very much again for inviting me, Leah. I hope we were successful in getting you up to speed on what is 5G security. If you liked today's episode, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment, and visit us at paloaltonetworks.com. Check out the description for more information about today's, and see you in the next episode.